I'm in a survival situation. I just shot my last arrow at a grouse in a tree. Mm, dumb move. Let's make some more. So I've got some natural shoot shafts that I cut several months ago and let dry. These happen to be ocean spray, but there's a lot of different species that you could use. When I was in British Columbia, I made primitive arrows for grouse hunting using rose shoots. Willow makes a great one, uh, red osier dogwood, pretty much anything that makes a straight, relatively straight shoot shaft like this. These things are not super straight. So the reason I have a fire going is we're gonna use that to straighten them. So the first thing I'll mention is I did cut these several months ago and I let them dry. And so when I made my primitive arrows on season eight, which they didn't show, unfortunately, I cut them early, right when I got there and I set them by my fireplace and a month later, I made my arrows. So these are dry. I'm gonna go ahead and take the bark off of them. Now I would suggest letting them dry with the bark because if you take the bark off too quickly on a lot of species, they have a tendency to crack like that right there, which that on this shaft isn't a bad thing because I'm gonna end up making a two pronged arrow out of this. So these shafts are dry with the bark on. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the bark off and we'll get started straightening these things. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and straighten this longer one. To do that, I need to just heat it up over the fire. Now I'm just sighting down this arrow, looking for the areas that are crooked, heating those up. So if you look right here, there's a big bend in it. And so I'm just gonna take my palm, put it right there and bend like this. Now it helps to have gloves or some other protection on your hand because these shafts get very hot. So for an arrow to fly right, it has to have enough weight on the tip of it. There's a couple of ways to do that. You could put a heavy head on there, a stone point or a bone point, something like that. Or you can just leave it long. For small game, that is, for primitive cultures, that's the most common way that they did that. They didn't add a tip to it, they just left them long. Which is exactly what I'm gonna do for this one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my knock in, just kind of flatten out. Two sides. So now I've got a little divot on either side. So I can just take my knife and go on either side of that divot. And pull out those little pieces. Next thing we need to do is make our fletchings.
most folks out there have paracord. So for this arrow, I'm going to use the interior strands of a paracord. So I'm going to take just a little dab of pitch that I got off the tree. I'm going to heat that up and rub it on the shaft to help hold my fletchings. I'm gonna finish this off. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my hand here and do a, a whipping technique, and I've shown this in another video in detail. This is exactly the way you would serve a bowstring. Got the fronts done. Now we just need to tie the backs down. So compared to normal arrows, that's a pretty small fletching and grouse feathers are pretty soft. So they don't work quite as well as a, say a turkey feather, but they'll still do the job and this arrow will shoot just fine. So there's a couple of different ways you can finish these arrows off. For this one, I'm just gonna put it in the fire, fire harden it and leave it as a blunt like this. For this one, since it has this big split in it right here, I'm gonna go ahead and split this and make a prong tip. So when these prongs go in, they're angled out and they spread and there's a spring action in this wood. So there's always constant tension inward. And so it spreads out and grabs. And so if you hit a grouse or a rabbit with this, you pretty much got them. So these prong tipped arrows look very cool and they actually work pretty well. They are a little bit more work to make. 
So the most practical thing just for small game is a regular old blunt. And a blunt tipped arrow like this will actually penetrate grouse or rabbit without any issue at all. Squirrels are a little tougher. Now these are not the prettiest arrows I've ever made, far from it, but I'm not concerned with how they look, just how they function. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. I think I see a grouse. It's right there. I'm gonna see if I can get a shot. I got him, I got him. Oh my God, oh my God, I got it. Oh my God, I got it. I got it. Thank you, thank you grouse, thank you. Dinner tonight. You guys can't believe how much this grouse means to me. So I really feel like it's, it's gonna work out. I feel like I'm here for the long run now. You know, I was just out scouting and didn't really intend to go hunting, but I saw this grouse in a tree. It's a risky shot, but luckily I had my handmade arrow and I was able to make a great shot. Ah! Ah. Yeah, just charged grouse. amazing a little dry really good though hey bear <laughs>